This is a preview of my Python backend course. If you'd be interested in this, check out the link down in the pinned comment or in the description. The moment has finally arrived. <sighs> we're only eight videos in and we're finally gonna write some code. Took us long enough. So this video, we are going to be talking about views inside of Django. Views are what take requests and respond to requests. So if you want some URL to be available on your website, you need to do two things. You need to create that in the URL path and you need to create a view for it. So the URL path does the wiring to say, hey, here are our URLs such as admin and this is the view that we want to accept that request. So let's just clean up what we have a little bit and open the necessary files. So we're going to want urls.py and we're going to want a views.py, which doesn't exist by default. So what we'll do is we'll go into files, say new file, views.py. All right, cool. So we can lower that, shrink this terminal just a bit to get some more screen space, and we can get started. So let's take a look at the urls.py. These are the different URL paths that can be hit. And by default, we just have admin. So how would we actually access that? So we're gonna take a look at the admin site in great detail in the upcoming episodes, for now, we're not gonna worry about that because we just wanna focus on the basics, which the best way to do this is to create our own view. So let's talk about what that's going to look like. The first thing is that we can define a new URL path. So that way we could access, say for example, the homepage, which you can describe with just empty quotes. And let's say this will hit views.index. All right, so that's step one, but we're not quite there because for one, this is complaining that it doesn't know what views is. We didn't define what views is. So to do that, we can actually import our other file views.py. So what that's going to look like is gonna say from, then the name of our app, which is files, and then say import views. And there we go, we can save, that warning goes away. However, when we save, we do get an error inside of the terminal module files.views has no attribute index. So we need to define what this is. So let's go over into the views and we're going to define our first view. And the way we do that is by creating a function. So to create a function in Python, it's gonna look like this. We're gonna say def index is the name of the function, then parentheses for any arguments that will be taken, which we're going to call request. And that's going to be a variable that we can use to refer to the request made from the user. And then all we're going to do is say return HTTP response, and inside of parentheses, we could use a string, hello there. Now, a similar thing, this HTTP response hasn't been defined, so what we'll do is we'll import this. There's a lot of different options here. Sometimes this helper is helpful. Other times it can just be a little bit overwhelming, but I do know that it's from django.http import HTTP response. So that's what it's supposed to look like. So we save, no errors down here, everything looks good. We will take a look now at the home page of our site. So we'll go back to here and it says, hello there. Awesome, so you basically created the hello world in Django, which required us to say what URL will be hit and then what's going to respond to that URL request. Now, a note on the imports, I'm just gonna mention that having these all memorized is challenging, so don't worry about if you have to refer back to earlier code, and there's multiple ways of doing it. So for example, here we use the name of our application, but you could also use a dot to say the current directory, so it's in the same directory, that works as well. So we'll save that and do a refresh, same exact thing. Now if we right click this page and hit view page source, you can see that it just says hello there. There's no HTML, which is not quite what we want if we're gonna be building a website, right? It's a start, but we're not quite there. This HTTP response doesn't automatically wrap it in HTML. It does turn it into a proper 200 OK response. So we can, again, check the network tab. So we'll go to inspect, network, do a refresh, and we get a correct response, 200, and everything works good. See, if you just tried to return a string without this HTTP response, it's not going to work. So if you did this, no good. Okay, so far so good. I'm going to continually commit changes at no guaranteed interval, like at the end of each video, for example, but when some section is complete, we will try to commit those changes. So let's go ahead and add the URLs 
in the views and we'll just say our first basic view. Sweet, so I committed that and then we can sync changes. Okay, don't show again. That means as you follow along with this course, you should be able to see this commit history to see the state of code at any point in time. So let's say our first basic view, this will summarize the changes, but you can also browse files to see all of those files at this point in time. You can see this is the commit hash. So as you're following along and you want to see a certain section of code, that's exactly how you can do it. That is after I make this not private, which we'll talk about soon. And if you're watching this, it very well likely is already public, so you can check it out. The next goal, we already have the view. We now want to create the template. And this is part of a three tier architecture, model, view, and template. We'll talk about all three of these in this course. We'll get to models soon, but first we wanna talk about views and templates. So the view is what handles the request, it does the processing, it's the logic part of it. The template is more of the visual. It's presenting data to the user who's viewing our website. So let's go ahead and create a template that's gonna have some data on it. Now, all this takes a lot of steps to set up, but once you understand that pattern, or if you have an example of a pattern, you can copy and paste for any of the views and templates you need, and then just change a little bit here and there. So let's say we want a page that'll list a bunch of files that we uploaded to our cloud storage. This might be available on our webpage at the files URL path. So we'd go to localhost or whatever our domain is, localhost 8000 slash files. Let's first go ahead and set up that URL path. Inside of the URL patterns, we'll add a comma here and say path. Inside of parentheses, we'll just say files and then have a slash there at the end. The view this is going to hit will be views.files. And we also have the ability to pass in a third argument here, which will name this URL path, which I'll just show you how to do that for now, like so. And this will come in handy when we want to make different URLs to visit on our website. Having a name for these paths will come in handy. Name is index perfect. Now let's go ahead and create this view. So let's go over into views.py. We can add another function here, files. This will also take a request. That's going to be in every one of these. And just to make sure things are wired up, I'm going to go ahead and copy what we have above, but then we'll change it to render a template, which I'll show you how to do that. So we'll just say files for now, make sure our server's good, scroll over, go over to the URL, and we'll type in files. Visiting that, and you can see we get files. So it worked exactly as we expected. Everything seems to be wired up good. But now what I wanna do is I want to create a template and render that. In a template, you can think of it as a mix of HTML and Python that's gonna get sent to the client as HTML. So I'll see that in action. Let's go ahead and we'll go into files and we'll say templates. Inside of this templates, this is going to be a little strange and I'll explain why in a minute, but we're going to make a new folder called files. So at this point we have this outer directory files, then our app files, and then inside of templates we have another folder called files. Pretty obnoxious, but this is used to namespace our templates so it can know exactly which one we're looking for, which will come in handy if you have multiple apps in your project. But what we'll do now is inside of this files directory, we will create files .html. There we go. So far the structure, the views, is just a single file for all of our views, but the templates are going to have their own file within inside of this files directory. And I don't intend to be confusing here with the naming. The fact that we're doing a project about files and I'm talking about files is a little confusing. So rewatch that if you need. But just to make sure we're clear on the names here, I'm calling this files.html based on its intended purpose to list out a bunch of files that we uploaded to cloud storage, which is the app we're kind of envisioning right now. So our views is going to return a list of files and to do that, we can render that template. So how do we actually render a template? Well, we're gonna replace this line here and we'll say return render inside of this parentheses. We're going to first just pass that request on to this render function. So render will have it. And then we're going to inside of quotes, put the namespaced template file. So it'll look like this files slash files.html. So this is going to look inside of templates, inside of this files directory, which is the name for our app, 
right here. And then inside of this files directory, we're going to get a list of files. If you wanted to make it maybe clearer named, you could say all files or something like that. But I'm gonna keep it like this. Now this render, we're gonna have to import this. So we'll go ahead and say from Django.shortcuts import render. And that's a, a little function that'll help us out to render templates without doing much complicated stuff. I'm gonna also clear out the terminal here. We haven't been using it and all that text is kind of getting on my nerves. The next thing what we can do is we can actually pass data to this template. So to see that in action, what we'll do is we'll use curly braces. And inside of these curly braces, we're gonna say data colon test data. So this is a dictionary in Python. If you're unfamiliar, it's gonna be these curly braces and then key value pairs. So the key is data colon and then the value is test data. And we can actually access this data using this key inside of our template. So inside of our template, inside of double curly braces, we'll say data. So save that, go back over to the website. We'll X out of this here. We're not gonna need that anymore right now. Do a refresh and you can see we get an error. Template does not exist at files. Now, this might be confusing because it seems like we set everything up right. There's actually one more step you have to do, which is a little silly. What we're gonna do is we are going to go into our settings.py and when you scroll through here, you're gonna see this thing installed apps. We actually have to add our app files to this list, surrounded in quotes and then a comma afterwards. So that's going to include this entire directory when it looks for templates. It's pretty strange that that doesn't happen by default, but that's just one of the steps you have to do. So if you ever get that template not found, make sure you installed the app in the settings. Now when we do a refresh, we get test data. Yay, where does that come from? That comes from the views. It's sent in as this value here with the key data and then in files.html, we access data. That is a lot of steps just to get the words test data on the page. Like I said, it's a lot of steps, but now that you understand how it's pieced together, you can copy that framework, I guess you could say, to make more templates in the future. So this pattern that we've followed isn't very handy right now, but it will be really nice once we start working with database data. Basically, the process is going to go like this. We will take a request, which will hit the view, that view will get that data using models, which we'll talk about. Once we receive that data from the database, we will send it as part of the context to the template. So the context, that is this section right here in this views. This here is known as the context. So later on, you can imagine instead of test data right here, we actually have a list of real files. And in this files.html, we can list out all of those. So to summarize that, the models, which we haven't quite talked about, is a representation of the data in the database. The views handle requests and return the appropriate data through the context, and then the template renders out that context and ultimately sends HTML to the client. The client being Google Chrome or whatever browser is visiting your website. So that's what's sent to the user. So right now we're still not working with HTML directly. So you can right click, view page source, and it's still pretty minimal, but you should be able to now go into this HTML file, which is going to be rendered to actual HTML. Right now it's currently a mix of Python and HTML, and you can do stuff like surround this by a paragraph tag. Now, when we go to our site, it's going to look the same, but when we refresh this, it's surrounded in HTML. That's why you'll see words such as render, because you can imagine this HTML file is not true HTML. And the reality is, is that this section here is going to be rendered into something else like this right here. So as we get more complex, we can have if statements and loops and all kinds of fancy Python stuff in the HTML code, but the end result sent to the client is just pure HTML. At this point, it looks like we've added a bunch of complexity just to display something very simple, but this pattern will allow us to build more complex applications without it getting completely unwieldy. One quick thing I wanna talk about before moving on to the next episode is the idea of a Django app. Django is designed to allow you to have a project that consists of multiple apps. So you could break your code out into multiple apps if you wish. And this is what explains the strange naming conventions with the templates where we said files first, even though we're already in a files directory, 
That's because we could have multiple apps. So instead of just having files here, we might have another app such as permissions, you know, if we wanted to split out a specific section of our code. So that might look like this, just as an example, we're not actually gonna end up using this. So we say python manage.py start app permissions. And that's going to create this new permissions directory. And then inside of our project, you can see there's no settings here. So we, the settings is actually part of our project right here. You can go in here and add permissions to the list of installed apps. So now if Django is searching for a template, it'll search through our apps. We don't want to have any naming conflicts. So we want to make sure we prefix basically fully qualify the app that this template belongs to. But that was just an example. So let's go ahead and remove this permissions and we'll just remove this permissions directory altogether. This is still a very bare bones project, but we're going to elaborate on this further. I'm trying to go in as much depth as possible so that we can truly understand what we are doing. And as we add stuff, the basics is really solidified and we can focus on the new content instead of figuring out the basics still. Definitely refer to the notes where I have a lot of this written out and some more explanation if you need it. Refer through that till you understand the three tier architecture, the model view and the template. Quick side note, if you're coming from other web development frameworks, you might have heard of something such as MVC, which is very similar, but with different names. So in that situation, model refers to the data, the view refers to in Django's equivalent, the template, and the C, the controller, is actually the view in Django. So the naming conventions are a little whack, but if that helps you associate what is what, then you can use that little tip. Stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to go into templates in more detail. Rather than just displaying a single string on the page, we'll be able to create loops to display multiple things on the page, which will be fabulous once we want to list real data. So stay tuned, don't miss it, I'll see you then.